attached. Antioch funeral policy has been sent out to uh, all local funeral homes, weekly updates to members. Um, if anybody is not receiving emails or phone calls, please let us know so that we can add your or see if uh, we have the correct telephone numbers and email addresses. Reverend Burton will be preaching first Sunday in March. Um, Deacon's ordination budget also included in pastor's report. Um, continue to engage and connect with members in the community. Background checks were discussed at last meeting. Um, background checks will be a one-time fee of $149 and $6 per paid employee and background checks will be done on all paid employees. Re-entry surveys will be going out for the month of March. Um, anyone for the entire month of March, um, surveys will be at the end of the month, March. In the, at the end of March, we will discuss um, the results at the next council meeting. Uh, it was mentioned that the trustees had already approved the background checks and um, it was discussed that because it was under $600 um, that they would go ahead and um, move forward with that process. Deacon's report, each deacon was given a list of members to keep in touch with on a regular basis. Trustee report, trustee report was broken into two parts. So I'll, I just um, condensed both Tawana and Telly's words from last meeting. Um, trustees discussed turning over all bookkeeping duties um, that Ms. Belinda Sledge is currently doing over to Ms. Annie. Conversation was had between trustees and Ms. Annie, but no money was discussed at that time. Also, it was discussed that everything would be done and ready to proceed by the end of March. Uh, also talked about uh, fellowship hall renovations. Um, two names were given as options for those that could be um, possibly do renovation. Discussion was had about musicians not being paid when asked to come, non-payroll musicians being paid or not being paid when services canceled. Um, discussion was had, brother chairman did not take into consideration when he did the Christmas holiday um, pay um, that we would have bad weather. Um, it was brought before the council to be voted on um, but because we did not have enough people, um, it could not be voted on and will be tabled for right now. Um, need suggestions for, oh, suggestion made that trustees would begin recording such policies and procedures and putting it into the policy and procedure manual um, so that we can refer to for future reference. Music department, music department will be getting um, a schedule out for March through June. Um, it will be coming out soon, um, and Ms. Luvanetta and Ms. Regina will be working on that. Um, and meeting was dismissed with prayer. You heard the reading of the minutes from the last meeting. Are there any questions or comments? If not, the minutes stand approved as read. Our financial reports by Ms. Scott. Okay, good morning. Good morning. The bank statement ending February 26, 2021. The community checking account was $46,231.46. The business CD $34,714.56 and the treasury CD was $7,166.08. Total withdrawals and debits for and service charges for the month was $5,139.81. Deposits, credits, and interest was $6,151.01. Of that, um, $2,335.01 was collected through Simple Give. And I'm looking at the CDs and 
we're not earning much interest on them. So we may want to go and check on that to see ways to earn more interest. And the scholarship account, uh, the balance is $2,627.08. And we only made two cent interest on that. Any questions? Are there any questions for the financial the financial report? If there's no questions, the financial report stand approved. Pass this report. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I am so Good grateful morning. for you each and every one of you all. Um, I want to begin with a uh, just some praise reports. Uh, we have had powerful preaching uh, um, throughout the last couple of weeks for our March Gladness service. And um, just to say that this is the, after this Tuesday, uh, we have made it through March Gladness. Y'all know last year COVID hit and we had to cancel after two weeks. And so even in the midst of the rain and the cold weather outside, we are still connected and engaging with our uh, local congregations. And so we're grateful for all the powerful preaching, not only on Tuesday, but on Thursday for our uh, uh, time in the word. And then also on Sunday mornings, grateful for our celebration of deacons on last Sunday with ordination service and what everyone did to make that such a success. Um, and my brothers and sisters, every uh, we have several folks that are taking note um, one in particular, Duke Divinity School. I uh, sent a message out saying that we had a special announcement. And so I am going to play a video uh, from Daniel Corpetan from Duke Divinity School. Hopefully everyone can hear this video. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to be with you uh, here today via video. I'm sorry that I can't be with you in person. My name is Daniel Corpetan. I serve as Director of Field Education at Duke Divinity School. And I want to sincerely thank you for your prayerful discernment of uh, hosting a field education student for this summer of the year 2021. Uh, you might be asking, what is field education? A uh, field education is the internship uh, aspect of the Master of Divinity degree uh, within Duke Divinity School. It is the crosswalk between the classroom and the context, the space that helps students to put into practice what they're learning in the classroom and to also raise new questions uh, from within the context to bring back into the classroom. Field education is a space where students see their God-given gifts come alive, where God blows their mind with opportunities to discover God at work in new and unexpected ways, for God, through God's people, to affirm the calling that God has placed on one's life. Uh, field education has benefits both to the student, those that I just mentioned, but also to the congregation. By hosting a field education student, it helps to foster a culture of call among the place for people and seeing someone who is actively answering God's call in their life to ask themselves, Lord, am I living into the fullness of what you're inviting me to live uh, with my life? Whether I'm a, a, a preacher or a business person, um, a stay-at-home parent, a doctor, uh, uh, a lawyer, whatever it might be, God, am I serving in all the ways that you want me to? Am I available to the work of your Holy Spirit? Uh, we really believe that field education helps to foster this kind of space where students can share their gifts congregation gets to share their gifts, and together with those shared gifts, there is mutual encouragement in Christ. Um, why Antioch? Uh, I confess to you, I'm a huge fan of your pastor. Uh, I have the joy of being able to work uh, with Pastor Milton while he was a student here at Duke Divinity School. I believe that God has gifted him in remarkable ways, and I believe one of the gifts that he has is for mentoring and teaching others, and so we would love to be able to connect a seminarian uh, with your pastor for him to mentor them and apprentice them into pastoral ministry. And we also understand through his testimony what God is doing uh, through Antioch and would love for a student to get to be a part of your community for this summer. Uh, I've already mentioned to you the benefits to both uh, Antioch and, and to Duke, um, and really do believe through this experience there is this mutual encouragement in God's spirit. Um, and for you, you have gifts, um, you have opportunities, you have experiences, wisdom, uh, that God has given to you, that this program invites you to share in the life of someone else, 
help them understand what it means to be a pastor, to help them understand what it means to be a part of the church, what it means to leave the church, what it means for a church to be a good neighbor within their own community. Um, it really is a blessing. And I, I hope that you will uh, look upon this opportunity with favor and, and see it as an exciting endeavor to be a part of. In terms of the cost to Antioch, we are grateful that through uh, a grant that our offices receive, uh, that we are able to cover the stipend for the students. So the stipend would not cost anything to Antioch. Uh, we do ask that you would consider providing a mileage reimbursement for the transportation costs for the student um, from Duke Divinity School to Antioch and then back again beyond the 25th mile. So for each mile beyond the 25th mile one way, um, we ask that you consider giving a mileage reimbursement. And uh, Pastor Milton and I have worked out those numbers and he can share those with you. In terms of what it looks like to move forward, the summer placement uh, would begin Memorial Day weekend, uh, May 30th, and it would go through August the 8th. A student would serve within your context 40 hours a week, uh, be able to be involved full time in the life of your congregation. To help the student and Pastor Milton uh, be prepared for this experience, we would have an online orientation that would be asynchronous. They could complete it at their own pace uh, the week of May 10th through the 14th. Altogether, that'll take about four or six hours. We would ask that Pastor Belton, in addition to equipping the student with opportunities for ministry, would allocate one hour a week to theologically reflect with the student, to be able to ask questions like, what is God doing in the space? What's God doing within you? And what does that mean for where God might be leading you next? Um, we'd also invite uh, a few folks from Antioch to specifically serve as lay mentors, uh, people who have a specific kind of experience that leads them to feel called to invest in the life of someone who has just said yes to God's calling on their life into full-time vocational ministry. Um, and you would be certainly more than welcome to join orientation and take part in that, but not required to do so. Uh, we'll announce placements on April the 16th. Uh, that's when we would let you all know who would be coming to serve with you for the summer. Our office uh, prayerfully discerns the student matches based on both an application from the student, where we listen carefully to them, and an application from the church that gives a um, a great narrative description of what God is up to in, in your context. Um, and we'll make those announcements on April the 16th. And again, the start date is May 30th and the placement will go through August 8th. Again, I'm so sorry that I couldn't join you in person. I'm really grateful for your prayerful discernment. Please feel free to give me a phone call. With any questions you have, um, Pastor Milton has my, my phone number. And he has my email address and I'd be very happy to talk with anybody who has questions. Again, thank you so much for your prayerful discernment. Um, regardless of whether or not you discern now is the right time or maybe a later point, know that I pray God's blessings over you in this season, over your ministry, uh, within in your community, and, and I'm really grateful for all God is doing through you. May the peace of Christ be with you. All right, my brothers and sisters, um, what I wanted to uh, present to everyone is um, the opportunities that we have here. Uh, with this Duke intern coming, his his or her focus for the summer would be um, our youth uh, with doing our uh, March Gladness service, um, partnering with the churches and doing a community VBS. Um, and so, again, this uh, student would uh, come and and with the senses of myself and, and others in the congregation, uh, be working toward building our youth up for the summer and not just for the summer. Uh, but this is uh, we're hoping and praying that this will be a springboard um, for our youth to. Uh, really uh, go to the next level with the help of the uh, advisors and all the folks that have been working with the youth. And so um, the only thing that I would want uh, um, questions for and, and approval for is the cost that is going to come to Antioch for the mileage. Um, uh, it was sent out in a past report. Uh, he'll, he or she will be coming up um, uh, two times a week. And we looked at that being $40 per trip. Um, and for the nine weeks that the uh, person will be here, that winds up being $720. If you looked at our budget, we have about $2,000 budgeted for education. And so what I wanted to do um, with the approval of you all is to uh, take that stipend that we need to pay him or her for coming uh, to Antioch throughout the summer and take that from the education. So um, could I, uh, I want to ask for any questions uh, from you all before we uh, take a motion. Any questions from anybody concerning the Duke Divinity Intern? Okay. Uh, may I have a motion um, to uh, 
uh, accept the Duke intern, but also pay them um, the uh, total of seven hundred and twenty dollars. Um, and that would be left up to the trustees on how they want to pay that, whether that's weekly or whether that's monthly. Uh, but what I want is if someone can make a motion uh, for the uh, cost of the mileage for the Duke intern, and then we'll vote on that. Can someone make a motion? Yes, this is Deacon Hart. I make the motion to uh, go forward with uh, paying what it is, whatever the knowledge is for the internship for, for them to come out. Second. Are there any objections? Are there any objections? Okay. The chair here is no objections. So the motion is recommended, Rob Milton. Bless you. Uh, moving forward to the next item on the uh, pastor's report is the 30, 60 day plan moving forward. Um, on last month, we had the approval uh, we were waiting on approval. We didn't have enough for Deborah Williams, who is the one who's been doing all the flyers for um, Antioch. And what we wanted to do was um, for a hundred dollars a month, she does. She can now do unlimited flyers. Um, and now with, uh, you know, with the Duke intern coming on board, Sunday school, uh, what's going on, uh, VBS. We have a lot of stuff that we'll be doing. Uh, we needed to uh, uh, approve her for the hundred dollars a month. Somebody might ask, well, where are we getting that from? Y'all know in the uh, orig original budget, in the original, yes. Okay, we, um, if you hit star six, we can hear you now. So yes, ma'am, would it, would it? Okay, we can hear you now, go ahead. When Deacon Hansel asked for uh, 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 a vote, moving motion, nobody answered me. I wanted to ask a question, but, but nobody could, could, couldn't get through. Okay. All right. We can hear you now. Go ahead, uh, Rev, with your question. Okay. The question, first of all, I couldn't really hear a lot of the, uh, the, 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 the that recorded. I couldn't really hear a whole lot. It was like, you know, like a little distance away. Okay. And I didn't really clear understand um, what, what he was saying. I heard the part about any of y'all and the pastor, but I couldn't really understand what he was saying. And um, so I need somebody to explain to me what was said. I know she moved the motion and all that, but I didn't understand really what 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 the question is asking. What is really what are you asking, pastor? The 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 is this for for kids going to ministry or is just uh, other curriculum? This is a Duke intern um, who will be coming to Antioch beginning May the thirtieth, all the way to August, mm -hmm. and there is a, a grant that has paid for his stipend, he his or her stipend. Normally, this is a um, ten thousand um, uh, dollar process, and so now since this grant has come up. Antioch didn't have to pay the ten thousand um, dollars, but now the only expense that will come to Antioch is the mileage form, I mean, the mileage piece. Okay. And yes, ma'am, the mileage winds up being a uh, forty dollars coming from Durham to Antioch, um, and with the nine weeks that the uh, uh, minister will be here, that winds up being seven hundred twenty dollars total. Um, and it might be somebody okay. else, uh, Rev, that didn't hear uh, what I was um, hoping they would do. So this summer, um, I would want this person to go spend some time at New Hope, um, um, go spend some time at other area churches, because the ultimate goal would be that this person would come in to really start focusing on our youth. We have been spending a lot of time over the last year, um, you know, working on our service, working on music and doing this. And so um, uh, God has laid it on my heart. And this has been a wonderful opportunity to to now put a lot for the next nine weeks is to really, really focus on our youth because with the renovations going on in the fellowship hall, we are hoping that we can start a youth church 
um, twice a month in the fellowship hall. And so everything that we kind of been working over over the last six months, um, the Lord is, is now kind of uh, bringing full circle. So, um, Rev, did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Because I couldn't understand your thoughts. All right. Thank you so much, Rev. And again, everybody, if there's if there's anything, we definitely don't want to uh, uh, go for it without anybody not understanding. So thank you so much, Rev, for that. And and again, star six. Yes, ma'am. Is this a council or conference? Conference. Okay. 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 conference. Yes. Yeah, okay. Because I was saying, you know, that's all I want to know. Okay. OK, any other questions? Because I, I definitely don't want to uh, uh, go through this stuff without without clarity for for anybody. So, again, thank you so much, Rev. Anybody else have any questions on the Duke intern? And so uh, what we have uh, agreed to vote, I mean, to have is uh, we'll we'll be um, they'll be making a decision on October, excuse me, April 16th on uh, who the person is. And I'll be sharing that with everyone. But the only cost of this uh, Duke intern to Antioch is the $720 that we just voted upon. Um, and so again, I'll be contacting not only Reverend Burton, but some others, um, because one piece that that uh, Reverend Daniel Corpenden said is that we want Antioch to be um, a testimony and a model uh, for this student to learn. And so I'll be uh, pairing him with some, some of you all to, to share some of your experiences uh, for him or her. And that way, again, we just want this student to have a great opportunity to learn from ministry. That's that's pretty much what this is. This is an internship. Um, so any other questions concerning the Duke intern? I got a question. Uh, yes, sir. Reverend Milton, uh, what's, the, what's the age limit? Um, I, I'm, I'm not clear on that. Um, that is one piece that um, um, the, the Duke students, we have some students that come straight out of college, but then we also have some that were like myself that had a career and then went back to Duke Divinity School. And so um, with the application process that I filled out, um, I shared with them some of the strengths and weaknesses um, that we have as a congregation, but also I shared with them uh, some of our theology about what we believe as a church. And so uh, just to be perfectly honest with you all, um, y'all do know that that most uh, Duke uh, students at Duke Divinity School, um, you cannot uh, um, hold them back based off of of gender, sexuality, but I share with them that where we are as a church, uh, we have not had much conversation on transgender or homosexuality. And so I didn't think that it would be uh, uh, appropriate for us where we are in our journey as a church for Duke to send somebody out that is gay or lesbian or, or transgender. Um, and so the thing that we want to do is we want to have conversation about that in the near future, but I just know where we are right now uh, we're not ready for that right now. And so uh, to Brother Hart, um, I don't know the age, but I do know that other than the um, the the sexuality piece, that was the only thing. Because I think that if they sent us a white male or a female, white female, um, you know, as, as a church, we don't have a problem with white brothers and sisters being at our church. And so um, I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Brother Hart. I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, the background check, does Duke, have they already done a background check on this person that's supposed to come or are we responsible for the background check? No, sir, they they are responsible for the background check. And um, as a part of uh, coming into Duke, everyone that has to uh, go through that background check and then they do it again uh, prior to them coming out. And so um, that's why if you heard them say that uh, April the, um, excuse me, May 10th through the 14th, I have orientation with them. At that time, that's when they'll give me all the documentation. Um, and then I can share that with our moderator and our chairman of the trustee board. Um, and because, again, we want you all to be comfortable with this person coming on campus. Um, and so, again, once they give me all the information, then I'll be sharing that with you all uh, because we want this to be a great learning experience. But we also want everybody to make sure that you all know that we're doing everything for uh, not only our children being safe, but this Duke student as well. So, yes, sir, um, Duke is covering their um, background check. All right, thank you. All right, great questions. Any other things? Any other things? Are there any other objections? Questions? We hear, we hear no objections, so we'll move on. Um, 
if we can, uh, uh, someone make a motion um, for the approval of Sister Deborah Williams doing the flyers. And again, just a reminder, the money to pay for her, um, we had allocated money for a custodian from January, February, March of $100 a week. And the money for our custodian for January, February, and March would take care of Deborah Williams for the remainder of the year. So again, uh, this would not uh, mess up the budget that we've already established. Okay. Will someone make a motion? that we go with her um, for the flyers. So we make a motion to move the $100 a week for the flyers. Are there any objections? I have a question. Is it a week or a month? The, the, um, it will be $100 a month. Um, and, uh, Sister um, Reverend Burton, excuse me, Reverend Burton was just saying that uh, the $100 a week was coming from the custodial piece. So uh, she'll be making $1,200, excuse me, um, let me see, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So it will be um, $100 per month. And so for the remainder of the year, that will be $900. Yes. Question. Yes, ma'am. Question from Edith. Um, have we considered anyone with, or has anyone volunteered as a member of the church to do flyers? Or would this intern be able to do flyers or do we have any other options is what I'm asking. Have we considered other options? Um, we're always open to any other options. I know that um, I believe it was last month, Sister Annie said that Miss Angela has um, um, skills with doing flyers. I have had Miss Reba, I see her online. She's done some flyers as well. Um, and so um, if those uh, two ladies would like to be considered, um, I, I would definitely not mind tabling this for um another month just so we can uh, um, get input from those other two ladies and anybody else. Um, and so again, the, the thing that I wanted to do is, is uh, definitely use the talents that we have, but also um, uh, moving things forward. And so uh, if there's anybody that has those uh, skills, uh, please uh, reach out to myself or Deacon Henderson uh, after this meeting. So uh, with that said, um, let's, let's uh, table our uh, 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 flyer approval um, just for another month. And that way we can, again, uh, check out our membership uh, to confirm any, uh, uh, if they would like to be on board with this. And if if not, then we can always come back and approve Miss Deborah Williams uh, next month. Okay. Um, the last thing that I wanted to just share with everyone is based off the surveys that I have received, uh, we have um, received several surveys of, of re-entry. And most of our congregation members were saying late summer, early fall for church reentry. And so I wanted to ask the recommendation uh, for us to go back into the church third Sunday in July for our homecoming, which gives us time to do the sanctuary cleaning, uh, gives us time to meet with our uh, boards and, and meet with our membership to get volunteers. Because now with going back in, uh, we have to have our stations together. We have to have our volunteers in place to scan uh, to do the cleaning. And so uh, my re recommendation would be um, that we go back in July 18th. Uh, and you also remember that's when it started getting extremely hot last year. Um, and so that way we could um, uh, we can go back in and, and a lot of our members uh, would not have to sit in the cars for the hot summer. Any questions on the uh, re-entry date or, or actually the surveys or anything like that? Any questions there? Um. Reverend Mills, did the, uh, the survey said the majority want to go back in now? No, uh, majority, I actually, the, the majority said uh, most of our older members said they were not uncomfortable. They were uncomfortable coming back in until, you know, September, October. Uh, but what we wanted to do, uh, most of those members that have spoken to me are, are our members that are on conference call. Uh, so we were still off our conference call and our Facebook Live. Um, but with our sanctuary size, we could go back in for homecoming. Uh, but space folks out in the in the pews, uh, but also, um, you know, we could have uh, several uh, opportunities. So for the folks that are coming to parking lot service, we could actually go back in for homecoming, uh, but space them out on the pews. Okay. Um, what was the number of people that wanted to go and the number of people that didn't want to go? Um, so this is the purpose of a survey. 
Yes, ma'am. So we collected about 45 surveys. And with the total of the 45 surveys, we had about 15 um, that said they were uncomfortable going back in um, until late fall. And then the other, like I said, 30 um, said they were, you know, comfortable going back in um, you know, late summer. So about a third of the, the congregation, um, and again, we had, we didn't uh, receive all of the, um, uh, we hadn't heard voice from all of our congregation. And, and so we, we're still, uh, wanting to hear from our folks, but as of right now, based on the surveys that we have, we have about a third of the people who are saying they are not ready to come back in until October, November, but we still have two thirds that said, um, you know, with the CDC guidelines, they will be okay with coming in um, in in summer. So we want to make it comfortable more. We want to make it comfortable for people, especially the the the, the members that that's faithful. Yes. We want we want to base all those faithful members that come into the congregation. We want to ever put those people in a place where they feel uncomfortable. And that's why I asked you those numbers because if the people voted for no, then we have to be um, in the favor of the way the people want to go, you know, not based on what we think or what we want, but just as long as we based on what the congregation wants. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And also, you know, I just don't want nobody to feel uncomfortable yes yes because you know the surgeon going up they were saying this morning surgeons going up and the cdc saying one thing but then their cases are saying something different and if we go into the sanctuary it has to be a deep cleaning not just wiping off the toilet and, and spraying it in the ass it got to be a clean yes ma'am yes ma'am there are a lot of people that members that, that maybe they think of it that we want to take care of our, our own that's what's more important than taking care of our own. Yes, yes. And this is what God requires us, you know, to look out for the elders and the widows. Those are the ones that are most strong that we got to look out for first. Yes, yes. And so, um, to. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there and you, that you go in prayer about this because I want to make the right move. Yes, ma'am. And so what we want to do is today, um, what I wanted to, to suggest to everyone is, is if you can talk to not only your household, but your family. And again, uh, um, uh, be checking because uh, the thing that we've done is over the last year, we have really perfected our parking lot uh, service. So if the cases, as Reverend Burton says, and, and we all can tell are going up, then what we would do is we would just remain in the parking lot like we've been doing. Um, and so again, the, the thing that we want to do now is kind of uh, put that tentative date. And I just want to say that again, the tentative date of homecoming uh, because at any time that the cases go up or we hear that our congregation is not feeling comfortable, then, you know, we just stay where we are. Uh, but what I want to do is kind of get everybody on a, on, a, on a mindset to say our goal is to go back in uh, homecoming. Uh, but again, we're all listening and following the Holy Spirit. And so we want to make sure that not only uh, are the, uh, the deep cleaning and all that put in place, but we want to make sure that um, everyone is comfortable at, as, as, uh, Rhett and Burton said, any other questions or concern with that? Because again, the main thing I want everybody to understand with that is, um, our trustees have begin, uh, have begun getting the uh, quotes for the deep cleaning and all that stuff. And so now we want to start getting that ball rolling. Um, but as we get that ball rolling, we definitely want to be, uh, mindful of what the, uh, congregation is feeling. And also we're watching what the CDC says about the case going up and all that good stuff. And so, uh, the biggest thing I want to do today is um, no approval needs to be for this part. What we're just simply doing is kind of putting this date in you all's mind, uh, but continue sharing conversations with your um, uh, with your family and, and with other members in the congregation uh, so we can move forward. Um, what I what I do want to ask you all is um, we have normally had traditionally had a revival on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Um, and what I would want to uh, propose to the congregation and, and have thought on is moving the revival to Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and reason being is uh, it's hard uh, uh, getting uh, folks to come out on, on Friday. Um, it's also for many of our uh, pastors that we've mentioned, uh, some of them uh, use that Friday as, as you know, sabbatical night for their spouse. And so uh, what I would like to hear thought on is. 
uh, what do you all think about um, um, keeping the revival the same week like we've always had it, but instead of doing Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, do Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday? Uh, any thoughts on that? I, I like that idea. Okay. I like that. Any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Okay. Um, so, um, Deacon Henderson, could I or someone, excuse me, could someone make a motion um, about the, uh, if there's no other questions? Um, and I tell you what, we have some time with that. Uh, if you all can check with your uh, brothers and sisters and cousins and, and ask about that, ab about that. And what we'll do is we'll just plan on voting on that in uh, our next uh next meeting but we're, we're having conversation about tuesday wednesday and thursday for our revival um the last piece that i have before i turn it over I back have over one, time. I yes have one I'm, question um since we're talking about revival i just want to know while we're thinking about moving the dates if we could also think about um going back to when we had one minister to bring forth revival I okay. think I, I just want us to think about that as an option again. One one benefit I, I have found in that is that that minister has prayed over that and they have a focus for our church and it can continue over three nights where we get a full understanding of, I guess, the message, the a center of, a objective of what they're what they're wanting us to hear um, and the consistency. I think that is nice. Um, we can still have different choirs, but I really, I, I'm just speaking for me as a member. I really have enjoyed when we've had a minister to come spend time with us over a period of time. So while we're talking about revival, can we think about that before we, um, by the time we vote on these dates or these yeah. days? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, what I'll do is I'll add that um, uh, to the uh, pastor's report. And that way, when that goes out, emailed. Um, that'll be on there as well. Thank you, Minister Bullock. Any other uh, questions uh, and concern concerning revival? Uh, Reverend Wilson, I was referring to, I was agreeing upon the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yes, ma'am. That's what I was, I was referring to, the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And um, what Ms. Rebecca Bullock said, I agree with that as well. Uh, I like one pastor, okay. if I can, to do the revival. All right. It's more consistent in our understanding. All right. Any other thoughts for, for revival? Thank you all so much. Any other thoughts? Yeah, Pastor Mill. Yes, sir. I, um, I had the opportunity to come out the other night, and the pastor that preached, uh, he, uh, a lot of the pastors preach is most on base focus in scripture. And the one that I got, I got the opportunity to see all of them, but the one of me being there, it was more like concrete to me. That's just me. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion, because she stage stripped. And uh, I think that the Marge Gladney was a good, it's a good opportunity for all of us. And if you got a pastor that's preaching the word of God and he's staying stripped, and he's moving us spiritually in truth, I think someone like that being preaching on those three days would be more focused in the area that we need to go as far as what God will have us to do for each other. Starting with um, us being honest and really being point straightforward with where we are in Christ. And that's, that's I like that. Okay. Okay. All righty. Thank you, Brother Hart, and to Minister Reba and Reverend uh, Burton. Thank you all so much. And again, this will be on the pastor's report. And so uh, we'll definitely keep that in prayer um, as we go over the next couple of weeks. Um, thank you. Last thing I have, um, uh, Sister Moderator, is that um, over the last year, uh, I have used some personal stuff uh, for Antioch, and some of that stuff has, has gotten destroyed. In particular, um, Y'all know we have done great with our um, online piece. Um, and so when it got hot, uh, First Lady, uh, we had our personal tents uh, for her to be under. And I don't know if you all saw that, but several times we ain't got up under and just tore our tents up. Um, and so what I would suggest and what I would like uh, uh, 
to is replace those two personal tents um, that we had. And looking on Amazon, we found two of them for 240. Um, and so I'd like any questions or discussions on that. Are there any questions, objections? Can someone make a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the $240 for the replacement of the tents. Okay. Are there any objections? Objection. Objection. Uh, this is Edith. In the trustees report, I don't know if the chair or the co-chair is on, but we discussed that in our meeting and we had a recommendation. I hope one of them can step forth with that recommendation. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, this is Tawana, um, the co-chair. Uh, I wasn't at the meeting, but in his report, Tully has said that the trustees were recommending um, eighty dollars. Uh, the recommendation was for eighty dollars for the replacement of those two tents. I believe that's what Tully has, and the recommended possibly eighty dollars needed needs to be discussed uh, to replace those tents versus the two hundred and thirty dollars. Now, were you all able to, to purchase two tents at $80 a piece, or were you all just trying to, you know, how did the $80 come up? I, I wasn't at that meeting. Um, I'm just giving the report that he sent to me. Um, I wasn't, at, so someone can speak on that behalf. Uh, yes, I can. This is Edith again. The concern was we didn't, if they were new tents, um, uh, we did not believe that they were new tents. And so the concern was if, um, if they were used tents, we didn't feel like it was our obligation since they were brought voluntarily to the church to give replace with brand new tents because we didn't know the age of them. So we felt like um, at least $80, we agreed upon the $80 as being fair and equitable based on, we didn't know the condition of the tents when they first arrived. Um, unless you could provide us a receipt that you bought them new and then um, uh, before use. And then we also said, we need to start buying our own stuff instead of letting you bring your stuff. Um, the church needs to invest in themselves. Um, and buy what we need so uh, that you won't have to use your personal items and have to be reimbursed later. So that was the reasoning behind that uh, recommendation. Okay, okay, sounds good. Now, uh, a couple of questions I have. Um, number one, um, I cannot prove that they were uh, brand new tents. Um, and so what I'll do is this time uh, we will, uh, I will go with the $80, but what I wanna do in the near future, um, because um, I have used a lot of, yes, my personal stuff. And so the thing that I want to do is make sure that at the end of the day, uh, my stuff is not getting tore up and then the church is benefiting from that. And so um, the thing going forward with the not only tents, but again, the church has been using my sound equipment outside for the last year. Um, and so, you know, the question I have is something happens to my sound equipment. Is Reverend Milton going to be short? Um, because again, I've been doing it for, you know, looking out for my church, but now you know, the thing I want to make sure is that the church looks out for me um, as I use my personal stuff. Um, and so the other thing in Antioch is that, you know, y'all have seen First Lady sitting out there in the heat. Uh, Nobody has volunteered to bring a tent. Nobody has volunteered to purchase a tent. And so um, the thing that I want to do is make sure that, um, you know, the, the stuff that you all have said is very true, that we need to buy our own stuff. Uh, but how long is it going to take for the stuff to get here? Um, and what are the things that we need to buy? Um, and so the first question I have is with the $80 that is recommended, um, that is fine. But we also know that the heat is coming up soon. Um, and I'm just, let me just speak on behalf of, of uh, all the faithful and loving husbands. I'm not going to have my boo out in the hot sun. So if, if any of them buy tents, uh, then I guess we just won't have uh, uh, the online pieces. So, 
That's the piece. Excuse that I want to me. Can I, can I say something? Yes. This is um, Annie Scott. How about if the church is going to give 80, the Scott, my family, would do donate the difference to get the, to replace the tents. And and I will donate some too. This is Carolyn. I I don't have a problem donating because I don't agree with the eighty dollars. So I don't either. If that. you all, if you all will, and if you will get with me, I don't know if you have my information, but I'll be willing to make the difference also. Yeah, this chair. This, can I speak this, one more time? This, chair, can this, I speak this, one more time? This, 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 I bought several of those tents before, and there's no way in God's name you're gonna get two tents for eighty dollars. And, and and I'm almost sure True. Reverend Milton and his wife bought those tents brand new. Chair, can I speak one more time? This is Edith. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that was only the recommendation of the trustees. The church is free to give whatever they so wish. That is just the recommendation. You do not have to follow that. It is a recommendation. Well, this is hard. Uh, I just donate the two hundred forty dollars for that tent, uh, and and uh, God has blessed me. He continued to bless me, so I I donate that you know, for the for the price of that tent, two hundred forty dollars. All righty, thank you, Brother Hart. Uh, Deacon um, Henderson, moderated is back in your hands. Thank you so much. All right. They are the sound equipment part. You didn't get that. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, what we'll do is um because with the with us not having enough uh conversation in the trustee meeting, I don't I didn't see that on his report as well. Um, so we still have some time with that. And so what I'll do is let me go back and check with my trustees and then we can bring that okay. back to executive council. All right. If there are no other questions for the pastor's report, we'll go on to the diggings. Um, this is Reba Bullock. I have one question. I have a question. Okay, so that the part about um, reimbursing the pastor has been resolved. However, it does that doesn't necessarily, um, and this may be new business, but I just want to put it out here. It doesn't necessarily um, fix the issue with us having tents or a tent if we're going to continue parking lot service. So, um, you know, we need to discuss that because I'm thinking, and I could be wrong, um, Reverend Milton, if we reimburse you, are you, you're not planning to use those tents for services again. Is that correct? Um, and we would need to purchase our own tents. Um, I would be willing to, to of course, uh, use it. I mean, allow the church to use it. Uh, but I think that uh, the trustees have brought up a good point that I think we need to begin transitioning to uh, Antioch purchasing their own stuff. And so, um, you know, yes, ma'am, I definitely think there's conversation that need to be had about um, purchasing the tents um, until we, uh, you know, fully go back into the church. Uh, Madam moderator. If I remember correctly, there actually was a motion on the floor to purchase for 240. Um, I mean, you have to, once the motion on, is on the floor, you actually have to follow through on the vote, either yes or no. Can someone make a, make a motion? About two hundred and forty dollars. I did but make the motion, um, my uh, madam moderator. I made the motion, but it was not a vote on it. I didn't understand you, madam moderator. I did make the vote before the discussion to reimburse a uh, pastor for the tents, but it was not a vote on it. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Rev, uh, uh, Deacon James Hart decided to um, donate that to uh, the tents for myself. But uh, what what uh, Sister Edith is saying, the motion is already there, and so uh, we need need to actually cancel. We need to actually cancel that motion uh, for the tents altogether. 
uh, what was stated earlier. All right. So we'll cancel that motion. The uh, Dickens report. Dickens bird. Apparently he's not on there. Uh, maybe he's having issues like uh, Reverend Burton was having. So, uh, okay. you, yeah. Well, we'll move on to the trustee report. Uh, good morning, uh, any y'all. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be reporting on behalf of the trustees, uh, even though I was not at that meeting on Wednesday night. Um, but uh, Telly Scott did send a uh, written report and it reads as follows. Uh, we're going to ask Mr. Uh, William Davis to cut the grass uh, before Easter Sunday and a possible cleanup day for Saturday, April 17th. And if it's a rain day, <clears throat> we're moving it to the next following Saturday, which is April 24th. Um, the steeple and fellowship hall is still our priority. Um, we're having someone to come out uh, soon um, to give us the quotes on the repairs that needs to be done in the fellowship hall. Um, we have already discussed the survey for re-entering the church. Uh, I think the recommendation was for third Sunday in July, uh, but we have already discussed that. I guess further, further discussion is still needed. Um, we also discussed the reimbursement for the pastor uh, for the tents. That's also been discussed and uh, determined. Um, moving forward, we would also purchase, I need, we're going to go ahead and purchase a tent for the church so that we can have our own tent on site. So if any equipment needed to, uh, to continue with service, we would like to have that list so we can go ahead and purchase. And that way we won't have to uh use personal equipment uh rec you know use our own personal equipment and last but not least um, um according to the meeting on wednesday they discussed the the salary for miss annie scott uh for its taking on the duties uh for miss sledge uh i think it was 150 dollars based on you know per month based on i mean more to her salary as per month so, again, thank you all for what you do. Let's keep Randy Pettyway and family in prayer and all of us as well. That's the report from Mr. Telly Scott, Chair. Are there any questions for the trustees? If not, we'll move on to our Christian education report. Rumbird. Apparently they cannot hear us. Hold on. Last recommendation, that recommendation for Amy Scott in the trustee report. Moderator, you're asking for my report? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, time in the word is going good. As I have discussed with Pastor Milton, that um, that God has given me a new name for a time and word, and we'll be changing the name soon, uh, according to when the pastor uh, we flyers or whatever or get it done. He will get it done. We've already had a discussion. But as far as um, the, the Thursday night is going well, um, we canceled this Thursday due to the fact that I have to get my second COVID shot, and I don't know exactly how my body will respond. And I don't want to have people on conference, and I can't do what I'm supposed to do. Um, I didn't want to wait to the last minute um, to do anything. So as far as for time and word right now, it is going fine. Okay. And people are um, getting comments, and I, I just give God all the praise for what God is doing. God is doing a great job. All right. Thank you, Robert. In the trustees' report, 
with the uh, financial um, for Miss Annie Scott. We need to vote on the uh, increase in her pay. Can someone make the motion? I'd like to make the motion that we increase the pay according to the um, the account that we have, we said we will pay. I move the motion that we do move forward in that matter. Okay. Are there any any are there any objections? No objection, Sister Moderator, but I had a, a, a question before we continue with the motion. Um, when okay. are we um, when are we preparing to uh, start this? Um, do we have a date that that uh, Sister Anna would be able to um, have all information from Miss uh, Sledge and that way we would know to have that increase ready for her in payroll? The trustees probably got to answer that. Do the trustees have an answer for that? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Annie, uh, since you're on, is that, can you answer that question for us, the date and for us when you can turn it all over? Um, the plan was April 1st, to start April 1st. Uh, we was also also asking for a a job description also. For Miss Ann. The only job description I had was the one you all gave me uh, about what a year or two ago. Okay. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely update that. And what I'll do is uh, uh, Deacon Henderson is, and uh, to our trustees as chairs as well, um, and rest of the financial folks. Um, I would like to schedule a meeting in the next couple of weeks uh, with Miss Annie, Miss Beverly, uh, Twaina, Edith, uh, our trustee chair, uh, just so we can uh, make sure we have all this uh, stuff working together um, as we make a smooth transition over to to her. Um, and so. If we can just look at our calendars and, and see the next couple of weeks when we can get that done. All right, thank you. Thank you. Our committee reports. The Burrow. Mr. Fisher. Deacon Henderson spoke with uh, uh, Brother Bobby, and what we're planning to do is that uh, cleanup date on Saturday, April 17th. Um, that will also be the day that we. Um, um, you know, they're going to do the cemetery as well. And so that's the update from the burial. Okay. The music. Probably she's not online either. Our unfinished business. We have any unfinished business. If not, we'll move to our new business. I have one. Miss um, Miss Angie Scott has accepted the position as our youth advisor, and we are thanking her for stepping up to work with our youth. Do we have any question on that? Our announcements, we have any? Now the moderator, did I miss that about the community vacation Bible school? Did you all speak on that? Yes, ma'am. That was earlier doing the presentation with the um, with the Duke student. And so, yes, ma'am, more information will be coming out um, to we can so we can schedule volunteers um, in the weeks to come. OK, thank you.
Any other announcements? Rob Milton, do you have anything? No, I'm 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 just grateful for all of the hard work that everyone is doing. Um, I am uh, I do want to say that I, I not only am I grateful for uh, the work that everyone is doing, but I'll be uh, having conversation with everyone on how um, again as we talk about spiritual gifts and all that good stuff, uh, what we can do to get everyone's hand on the plow. I think that's my only concern about uh, moving forward and going back in the congregation. Um, and y'all know uh, as well as I am. Uh, that we have a lot of members who are on the sideline. And so uh, I'll be having conversations with not only the folks on the phone, uh, but those other members uh, to see what we can do to get more folks active and engaged, um, our Antioch folks more active and engaged at Antioch. And so uh, I want you all to be in prayer with me on that. Thank you. Thank you. Rum Burton, can you close this out in prayer, please? please. Uh, chair. Chair, I have two questions. Chair. All right. All right. Uh, I just wanted clarity on the start date for Miss Annie. Uh, since there's no job description, will she still start on April 1st or will they be pushed back? And then also the steeple. Um, did we get an update on Friday or do we need to go with another company? Um, Sister Edith, let me start with the second uh, question first. Um, I did not uh, get a call from him um, yesterday, uh, I, and I do apologize from everyone. I had several calls on my phone, but uh, we had a, a football game, and so I don't know if he called me or not. Um, that's one of those things I'll definitely be taking care of, um, checking in with him uh, Monday morning and sending out a message to the trustees and the church in my weekly updates. Um, and so I don't know if he did call or not. I was just ripping running on yesterday. Um, in regards to Miss Annie, um, I think that she is making preparations to begin April 1st um, and, and making those preparations with Miss Sledge. But I think also um, get, uh, getting her job description and uh, those policies and procedures that I know the trustees have been working on. If we we're going to have that ready uh, in our meeting in a couple of weeks, um, that way we can finalize everything. But I think that um, um, and I don't want to speak for Miss Annie, but from my understanding, uh, she's making preparations to uh, start April 1st. Okay, thank you. Sure. Are there any other, any I, other comments? I, I, this is hard. I got one more quick comment. Um, okay. We're concerned of going back into the church. Uh, a lot about, about um, more uh, COVID shots is being um, administered to people. A lot of us people in the church, speaking of myself too, when you're around people and they, they're talking about don't want to take the shot, I had a conversation with this young lady at one of the other churches here in Henderson, and they are just promoting our people to take the shot. People send Christ, yeah, God loves us, He protects us. But he did initiate the civil law. We have a lot we have to buy. That we heard people speaking next about taking that shot. We need to speak up on uh, on that because a lot of us people just been telling me they're not gonna take it. And I think it's sad. And I think it's sad for we Christians that we must realize we are held accountable for everything that we say when we are in public. I heard a lot of stuff being said, and when you speak on stuff, is opposition to God. People say, well, what church do you go to? Have you ever noticed that? What church do you attend? We represent the church that we attend, and we also represent Jesus Christ. Uh, going back to the church is a great thing, but let's make sure that we promote and tell people the positive side of the COVID and the positive side of being Christian. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Rumberg? Burn. Can you lead us in prayer, please? Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us go before the throne of grace. Most righteous and kind, and today we come thanking you, Lord God, for our attentiveness in this meeting. We thank you, Lord, for being honest and being respectful of one another's decisions. And God, we ask God to continue to grow in it, y'all, in the way that you would have us to go. Let it be powerful, filled with your anointing and your grace. God, we ask God you would touch every heart 
under the sound of my voice, Lord God, not just the ones under the sound of my voice, but touch the families, Lord God, that we can all come together, be on one accord, and be about our Father's business. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we give praise, give honor, and glory to your name. And God, as we leave this conference, do not leave your presence. We ask God, you continue to cover us, Lord, with your word of God, that we can be able to walk in integrity, walk represent the church that we represent, we go to, to represent you, God, in everything we do and everything we say. Continue to bless the pastor and first lady. Continue to bless our deacon board and our trustee board. Continue to bless our mother board and everyone that held position, Lord. Continue to bless them, Lord God, that they will run this race, Lord God, knowing that if you be for us, that you are more than the world against us. Yes, and we sir. can run it until the end. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise. And God, we ask you to forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the precious name of Jesus, we do give you praise. And the people of God say amen, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thank you, brother. And we hope everyone have a blessed afternoon. Good time. This is terrible.